Hi folks, my name is Dr. Jenny Kimball. I am an assistant professor in the Agronomy and Plant Genetics Department at the University of Minnesota. And we are here today in the Wild Rice Paddy Complex at the North Central Research and Outreach Center in Grand Rapids, Minnesota. Now, as many of us Minnesotans know, wild rice is really important here in this state. Um, we're in the species natural range. And so this, this uh, species is really important ecologically. It's in our local food web, so it's really important. It provides a lot of food and shelter for our uh, wide range of species, uh, especially the waterfowl in this state. It's also important culturally to the sovereign nations of Anishinaabe and Dakota First Peoples. And it's also really important agriculturally as a, a cultivated crop, which is what you're looking at today. Um, we grow a cultivated wild rice in these paddy systems that have raised dikes and, um, and are obviously flooded with water. One thing that I want to talk about with wild rice is it's a local, locally grown food. So we have a pretty low carbon footprint and whether you um, eat wild rice that's harvested from the lakes or rivers or the cultivated wild rice that we grow here in northern Minnesota, it's a really nutritious food. So in the grain here, there's about twice the protein content and twice the essential amino acid content as compared to something like white rice. And also it has a lot of dietary fiber. So wild rice is really, really um, good for promoting a healthy digestive system. One reason why I love wild rice is the really wide range of genetic diversity, natural genetic diversity that we see in this species. And one of the examples that I'm going to show you are panicle types. So this is a wild rice panicle and this is what we would call a normal panicle. So we have these branching male florets. Then another type, this is called bottle brush. So as you can see, these male florets are actually um, more compact. And one interesting thing about this panicle type is that typically bottle brush is male ster sterile. So this type of panicle, this, this structure, they don't actually produce pollen grains. Another really weird one, this is called the pistolet trait. So as you can see, if you compare the normal panicle type to the pistolet, you can see that actually all of the male florets are not here on this, on this panicle. It's all grain. So this could be a really interesting breeding opportunity. One thing that we have found is that where the male florets should be, usually this uh, seed is not fertile. So we usually only get grain up at the top um, half. Um, but this is an example of of, of this crazy genetic diversity that we see in wild rice. And yeah, one of the reasons that I really love working on this species. Something I wanna to talk to you about today is the unique life cycle of wild rice in terms of, uh, in comparison to other crop species. So we will plant wild rice on dry land here in the paddies, just like any other upland crop. We'll plant it with a tractor and a planter, and then we'll flood the paddy immediately. That wild rice seed will actually germinate under water it'll start to produce leaves underwater and then we'll get to what's called the floating leaf stage and that's a really cool stage where we have leaves that are just floating on the water and it's a really pretty sight to see the sea of floating leaves on the water then it, with certain environmental cues the wild rice plant will send a shoot up up above the water so the wild rice will go aerial and that's what you're seeing here so then it will start to produce tillers um, other leaves and stems from the main stem and then it'll start to flower which is what we have here today. Um, the seed will then fill into, into the hull and naturally in um, in our lakes and river systems, this seed will actually shatter. It's a natural dispersal mechanism for wild rice. But in cultivated settings, we don't really want that because then when the growers come in with their mechanical harvesters, also known as combines, they'll lose a lot of their yield. So one thing that we've been working on in our plant breeding program is to reduce seed shattering of wild rice. There's something in wild rice that's called an abscission zone. And what, what will happen is genes will turn on and there's a layer of cells that actually form that will break off when the seed is mature enough. And that's how the seed shatters. So there's natural variants in this gene. And what will happen is if we can detect and identify those variants, that abscission layer won't form. And so then the seed will actually 
stay on the panicle. Now, wild rice, the wild rice panicle is really unique. So below here, what you see are the male florets. So this is where the pollen is gonna come from. And these are the seeds. This is where, this is where the wild rice grain is. Now, this is an example of a shattering plant. So we know that the male florets shatter first and it's highly correlated with shattering of the grain. So the jobs that we have as plant breeders is trying to produce new cultivars or varieties of, our, of the crop that we're working on that helps the farmers grow um, better plants that have higher yields, reduced inputs, as well as um, we, we wanna create really sturdy, hardy cultivars. This is an example of a plant that we wouldn't actually select for in my program. It's kind of uh, sprawly. We want things that are really erect, that have big seed heads. We want things that, uh, that can withstand all of the crazy northern Minnesota storms that we get. This is something called lodging resistance. So the plants, if a big storm comes in and they don't have strong root systems, they can fall over and then the, the grower obviously can't harvest that grain. When I talk about reducing inputs I'm talking about things like if we can improve disease resistance um, in wild rice then we then we effectively reduce the amount of pesticides or or those types of inputs that, that, we, that we the farmers use to to get a healthy crop so I want to thank everybody for for tuning in today and uh, make sure that you go out and eat, eat your wild rice <laughs> <laughs>